You know what to do. Subscribe. Rob Armstrong. What's up, folks? What's going on? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are talking about bike computers. We'll be talking about the Garmin Edge 1030 and the Wahoo Element Roam. So get this out the way. I'm not affiliated with Garmin. I'm not affiliated with Wahoo. I bought the Wahoo Roam out of my own pocket. I bought the Garmin 1030 out of my own pocket. This ain't gonna be an unboxing. I ain't gonna tell you about all the little accessories. This is my own personal user experience between the two computers. So I had the Wahoo first. I bought it. I was riding it for like a year and some change. Uh, I have had a buddy who was getting into cycling. They wanted to buy a computer. I gave him a good price for it and I figured this would give me an opportunity to try out something different. So then I went out and I bought the um, Garmin 1030 and I've been riding that for about probably about like three months now. So I gathered enough data to come up with this video and I'm gonna talk about things that I liked, things I didn't like, things that kind of work and things that did not work. This is from my own perspective. I have like a time trialing discipline. That's like, I prefer to ride a TT bike. I prefer to be in an aero position. That's just my thing. I have a road bike. I'm trying to get more into road biking, but I just naturally like the aero life. So that's just like my own perspective, but some things may be applicable to you. Some things may not. And it just gives you some insight from another user's perspective. So without further ado, let's get on to it. We're going to start off talking about the Garmin Edge 1030, right? And this is just my own experiences from me using it, comparing them to each other, things I like, things I didn't like. So I'm going to start off with the don't likes. The size. Yeah, the, the, the Garmin, it's large, but I really don't care for the size. It is significantly larger than the Rome, as you can see. But to me, it's just like a lot of wasted space that I, I just don't, I don't need it to be that large. I thought I was going to like it being larger, but I kind of don't. Um, the screen. I don't know what it is about the Garmin screen, but I didn't like the screen. I didn't like kind of like the resolution on it. And mostly when I'm riding and I'm looking at the information that's being presented, it's easier for me to see the information on the Wahoo versus the Garmin. But that's just me. I mean, because if you're just looking at this, both of these right now are set up with six fields of data, right? And in the six fields of data, I think it's kind of more compact and organized on the Wahoo versus the Garmin. Yeah, the Garmin's bigger, but is it really bigger? Because if you look at the numbers, yeah, it's more real estate on the Garmin, but the numbers are kind of actually bigger on the on the Wahoo with the smaller screen. But anyway, also with the Garmin screen, it would have like this clay, this crazy kind of glare when I'm riding, and and I didn't like that. Also with the Garmin screen, I didn't experience this, but this was just stuff I was doing some research on and from forums. They were saying that like the screen kind of burns out from being in the sun. So a lot of people have screen protectors. So I went out and bought a screen protector for my Garmin. When I had the Wahoo, I never needed a screen protector. Um, so that was just one thing. Moving on. Touchscreen. I don't like the touchscreen. I thought I would like it, but I don't. And the reason why I don't like the touchscreen, because, man, it's damn near... 2021, bro. I have a smartphone and my smartphone is huge. So whenever I'm used to doing something that's handheld, I'm used to how touch sensitive, how interactive a phone is. So coming from like a phone to another device, I don't like the I don't like the interaction of the touchscreen with the Garmin 
compared to just like modern day technology. I just it just wasn't appealing to me. To be honest, I have an old school iPhone five that I use strictly for music when I go to the gym, and I'd rather interact with that thing than the Garmin. That's just my personal opinion with it. Um, moving on. The data fields. When it comes to setting up the data fields, it was a pain with the Garmin. And you can kind of change some of the layouts of it. Let's say you're setting up something um, and you're looking at the data fields. There are different things you can do. Let's say you want like, I don't know, four, six fields. They'll have like 6B or maybe layout 6A, but I don't know. I just, I just didn't like it. I wasn't feeling it. So I didn't like the way the data fields were displayed on the Garmin. Another thing I didn't like about the Garmin was the Garmin always had like extra information. And what I mean is like these icons, if you look at the top, you see all these little extra icons, like I don't want to see that. I don't care that DI2 is connected. I don't care that the, you know, the Wi-Fi connection. I don't like seeing all those extra icons on top. It's just like extra information that I don't, I don't want to see. I didn't like that about the Garmin. Um, also alerts. When you are riding, I'm out and I'm using the Garmin and I get an alert, like I get a text message or something with the phone or some type of alert. Then the, the alert comes up and it takes up damn near like half the screen. And it's like, I either got to wait for the alert to go away or I got to interact, interact with the device to get it off the screen. And I didn't like that. I'm like, why is the alert so big? Like, I get it, but I'm riding right now. Let me, let me focus on the data that I want to see. So I didn't like that. Um, another thing I didn't like about the Garmin was the power sleep thing. So when I first got the Garmin, I would use it. And then the next time I would use it, I was noticing like the battery life wasn't lasting as long as I thought it should last. And I'm like, why is it not lasting like that? Then I finally figured out if you don't use the Garmin, the Garmin will go to sleep, which sounds like a good thing. But let's say I come back from a ride and I don't power it off and it sits around and it goes to sleep. It's still using battery, not a lot, but it's still draining battery. And it was it was making me upset because I was losing more battery than I thought I should. And come to find out, you have to turn the Garmin off, you know? So like when I'm done riding or whatever, I have to tell it, hey, power off. If you don't, it will go to sleep and it's still going to be using battery. I did not like that about the Garmin. Um, another thing, the data fields gear display. So what I mean is, on both my bikes, I have DI2 set up. And as you can see right here, it says like the rear gear. And I don't like the way the information is displayed. Matter of fact, let me wake up this DI2 on his bike and see if it will connect. So I can show you specifically what I'm talking about. But um, so basically, here we go. So on my TT bike, I have a one by system and that one by system is just showing me like the rear gear. So for example, if, if I tell it, show me just the rear gear, it gives me this bar graph. But in addition to the bar graph, it tells me like you're in gear six of 11 or something like that. And it's like, I don't, I don't want to know that. I just want to see the bar graph. And then if I tell it, just give me the specific number, same thing. It's going to tell me, you're in gear six of 11 or five of 11. And I don't want to know that. I, I just want to know the specific number. So I didn't like the way that was laid out with the Garmin. Like I said, it could just be me, nitpicky thing. Next thing I didn't like about the Garmin was mounting it. So this thing is huge, bro. When, when my Garmin is sitting on my roll bike, there's these buttons on the bottom of the Garmin. The Garmin is so large that there's there's no there's not a lot of space for me to push these buttons. I have to squeeze my fingers in here to push it. And I I didn't like that because it was too large. Also, 
I have like a TT background. That's just like what I prefer to ride. I prefer to ride my TT bike over everything. And most time I'm riding in my aero bars. The Garmin is so large, it doesn't sit down in my aero bars the way I would like it to. And then when I say mount, mounting this, um, for example, this is a mount by K-Edge. And it's supposed to be, not supposed to be, it's an aero mount. And you see the way it's made. It's large, it's more real estate. And when this is connected to my aero bars, I can make this sit down lower, but the Garmin doesn't fit on there well because it's too large. And then also it can't connect because it doesn't have the same, the same connection point. So I couldn't use my high speed aero mount with the Garmin. Didn't like it. So that's all the dislikes for the Garmin. And, and not just to come out here and bash it. Let's talk about like some things I like. Things I liked about the Garmin. The startup speed. Man, when you cut this thing on, it starts up super fast. Same thing with shutdown. When you tell it to turn off, it cuts off super fast. I did like that. Another thing I liked about the Garmin was you can you have like an auto start and auto stop feature when you're riding you can set the speed of that so you can say once i get to six miles an hour start my ride or once i get to 10 miles an hour start my ride or pause my ride you can set that specific speed on the garmin that was really cool i really did like that another thing i liked about the garmin was having di2 on my roll bike I got a two by, you know, I got a rear derailleur and I got a front derailleur and there's different modes of DI2. You can just have like, um, like the regular standard mode where you shift everything, but they also have this mode, the synchro mode and synchro mode is basically like if you drop your, um, front derailleur, you go from like the large cog to the small cog, it would automatically change the position on the rear cassette like automatically the thing i liked about the garmin is that when i have my di2 in full synchro mode or that synchro mode it lets me know when it's about to automatically change gear so i'm riding 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 unless i downshift and i i'm at the shift point before the change on the garmin it's gonna say hey bro the next shift we're gonna automatically change all this stuff because that's what you told us to do I really like that about the Garmin. That was real cool. Just seeing that uh, when you're out riding and knowing that it's about to do that in the synchro mode. That's cool. Um, other things I did like profiles. So on the Garmin, like you see here, you can have different profiles. So if I ride my TT bike, there's like certain data fields I want to see. I go to my TT profile. If I'm going to just ride my indoor trainer, I can set up certain data fields I want to see only when I'm on my indoor trainer. Same thing, if I'm riding my road bike and there's certain data fields I want to see, you can set up different profiles for different bikes or activities or however you want to set up. Or just say like, let's say you you and your significant other, y'all share the same bike computer. They can have their own profile and not have to worry about seeing the data that that you wanted to see, or they could just see whatever data they wanted to see. I thought that was really cool about the Garmin having those different profiles. Another thing I liked about the Garmin is you can do custom alerts. Custom alerts meaning, let's say I'm out riding and I'm gonna do, hey man, I'm riding 50 miles today and I need to be on my hydration, I need to be on my nutrition. You can set the Garmin to tell me, hey, every five miles, Every 15 minutes, remind me, hey, you need to drink or you need to eat. You can set up custom alerts like that on the Garmin. That was super cool. I really like that. Another thing I liked about the Garmin, the Garmin is like a computer computer and it accepts like third party applications and stuff. So let's say you want to download Let's say you don't like how this, how this data is being presented. You can download a whole different like data screen and they can have like a high speed speedometer. 
or like I said, there's six fields of data on here. You can download a data page that has like 17 fields of data and it can be different colors and everything. You can do that with the Garmin. I thought that was really cool that you can do that as well. Another thing I liked about the Garmin is, let's say you want to personalize your Garmin. For example, this is the Garmin Edge 1030. If you know anything about the 1030, the 1030 is white, but I have this rubberized sleeve on here. And you see the way this thing fits? You wouldn't even think this thing was white unless you looked at the back because the sleeve fits. It's fit. It looks like it belongs there. It completely changes it. And I think they got like, like a blue one, a red one, a yellow one. So if you want a different look to your Garmin, you can buy the sleeve. And not only does it give you more, uh, an easier grip or easier to handle, it's kind of because it's got like a rubberized uh, feel to it, but it also changes the, the look of it. And it looks like it's supposed to be here. It's actually made by Garmin. So I really like that about the Garmin. That was cool too. And that's pretty much it. Transitioning to the Wahoo Roam. Roam. All right, we're going to start with the dislikes. One of the things I don't like about the Wahoo Roam is that the startup time, man, this, this joint takes forever to start up. It takes forever to start up. Um, yeah, it's slow. In comparison to the Garmin, yeah, it's super slow. Um, things I don't like about the Wahoo. The data field highlight. So what I mean is, if you look at these data fields on the screen, you see the miles per hour looks different. It is like a white text on a black background. I wish I could change that to whichever field I want, but you can't. You kind of can, but you can't. I'm going to talk about it a little bit more when I, like, when I highlight some of the things I like. But yeah, you kind of limit it to which fields you can have highlighted like that. And I don't like that. I wish I could make it any, any one I want to. Um, alerts. You can't do custom alerts with the Wahoo. And like I said, if you're going to go out and you be riding, you know, 50 miles, 75 miles, 100 miles, it's nice to have those reminders like, hey, bro, you need, you need to take a drink. Hey, man, you need to eat something or hey, you need to rest or whatever. I really like that feature about the Garmin and I wish that the Wahoo had it, but it doesn't. Um, another thing I don't like about the Wahoo is the start and stop speed. You can't change that. I, I don't even know what it's auto set to, but if you want to kind of manage it, you're going to physically, physically start or stop it. You're not going to be able to set it to a specific mile per hour. Uh, don't like that about the Wahoo. Another thing I don't like about the Wahoo is like, this is it. Even though I like how it looks, it's real sleek. But like I said, if you want to do some customization like sleeves and stuff like that. So I did find a company that sold the sleeve for um, the Wahoo. But when it's on here, man, it ain't like the Garmin joint. I don't know. It's like real cheap looking. It doesn't feel nice. The buttons don't feel the same. It's it's trash. Granted, <laughs> this sleeve is only like four or five bucks, but it's it's not the same. You can't customize it like how you could do the Garmin. So that's the stuff I do not like about the Wahoo unit. Um, now, going to likes. Things I liked about the Wahoo. The screen. Even just right now, if you're just looking at the screen from right now, from the video, I don't know, the, the information on the Wahoo, it just looks clearer to me. It just looks clearer. Despite the Garmin being significantly larger, I feel like the, the numbers are bigger and the text is just, it's just clearer. When I look at the Garmin, it just looks kind of grainy to me. And... Forget how it looks when it's sitting stationary. When I'm out riding and I'm taking a quick glance down, it's so much easier for me to see the Wahoo screen. And I just I just love the Wahoo screen so much better than the Garmin. Like I said, that's just that's just me. Everyone's got their own preference. Another thing I liked about the Wahoo is the setup. Oh my goodness. You turn this thing on, a QR code shows up. You scan it with your phone and it's like, hey, bro, set me up. And then it was I was just moving. I was just operating. The Wahoo was the first unit I had. 
and coming from nothing, never having any interaction with any type of bike computer, it was so easy for me to navigate and set up the Wahoo. I never had to do any research. I never had to go to no forum to try to figure out something that I wanted to do with the Wahoo. It's just very user-friendly. I love that about the Wahoo. Um, other things I liked about the Wahoo, the data field layout. So one of the features that the Wahoo has is, let's say I got this information, right? And as I'm riding, I want to I want to take some of it away. The Wahoo has this feature where you can hit the buttons on the side, and it'll slowly take those data field the other data fields away, and it'll make the screen larger. Man, that's super dope. I love that about the Wahoo. I wish the Garmin had that, but it doesn't. Um, another thing that I liked about the gear display. So this is what I was talking about coming from, well, comparing the two. Let's say I'm on my TT bike. If I'm riding my TT bike, and let's say I got the, the graph that shows me what gear I'm in. That's what it shows me, just the graph. I don't have to see the graph and the number. I don't want that. I want the graph. And then let's say I just want the, the specific gear number. It just tells me, hey, bro, you're in gear eight or you're in 11 or you're in one or whatever. It's not that you're in gear eight of 11 or six of 11. And, that, and that's kind of nitpicky. But like I said, I prefer riding my TT bike. So when I'm flying down the road and I'm in the aero bar and I look down real quick, I just want to see the information I want to see. I want it clear. I want it simple. And that's it. Um, and I think the Garmin, I mean, the Wahoo does a better job of displaying the data that I want to see. So I really like that. Another thing that's super dope about the Wahoo is on the sides, you see on the sides and on the top, you have these LEDs. And you can set those LEDs for different data fields. So right now, my side LEDs, I have it set up for average miles an hour. So as soon as you start to ride, the center LED is white. It'll be white. And it's kind of showing me um, my average speed. If I start going above my average speed, the field will get darker blue. If I drop below the average speed, it's going to drop down to like a yellow. And I really like that. So these LEDs can show different things. So let's say I have it set to power. It's going to show me my average power. If I'm more than the average power, it's going to go up. If I'm lower than the average power, it's going to go down. But um, you see how the mile per hour, it's the white text on the black background. If I have the side LEDs set to power, then the power will have the white text on the black background. So the only way to change which field is highlighted is whatever the side LEDs is set to. And I kind of like that kind of don't because what I would prefer, I would prefer my power to be white text on black background, but I'd have the side LEDs with the speed. But I can't set it up like that. Maybe Garmin can do, I mean, Wahoo could do an update or something. But anyway. I do like those LEDs features on the Wahoo. Another thing I like about the Wahoo is that I can set the timer for like 15 minutes if it's not doing nothing. And let's say I come back from a ride and I forget to turn it off. In 15 minutes, this thing is it turns off. It's not in sleep mode. It's not using no more battery. It's off. I like that so much better than like that Garmin sleep stuff. I ain't feeling it. Another thing I like about the Wahoo is that I have a smart trainer. I have a kicker smart trainer and I can control my smart trainer from the Wahoo. And you can probably do that with the Garmin too, but the way the data is presented on the Wahoo, I just like it better. That's just me though. Another thing I like about the, the, the Wahoo is my arrow mount, bro. I can use my arrow mount. When this thing is on here, it just looks. It's so streamlined, and specifically when this mount is on my aero bars and I have my Wahoo unit in there, I can drop it down, and it's literally in between my aero bars. And I just, I really like that about the Wahoo Roam. Um, 
Another thing I like about the Wahoo is the form factor. Yeah, it's smaller, but I think it's just easier in the hand. Let's say I'm out riding and I stop at a store and I don't want my bike computer sitting on my bike while I go in the store or whatever. Of course, you could take both off, but it's so much easier just to take the Wahoo off and just put it in my pocket. It's just it's just in my pocket. And I, I don't even know it, you know. And another thing, too, let's say you're a weight weenie, right? Check this out. I'm going to show you. If you walk around, let's say you got your smartphone and it's already ferocious. That thing weighs a ton. And then you take your garment out, you put it in your pocket. 154 grams. Okay. Wahoo. 95 grams. It's like a huge difference. Is it that bad? No, but like I said, this is just a me thing. Um, and that's kind of basic, basically it. As stated before, if you don't have a computer, if you buy the Garmin, you'll be fine. If you buy the Wahoo, you'll be fine. It's really going to come down to what are you using it for? What are you trying to do? I personally prefer the Wahoo over the Garmin. I started off with the Wahoo. I rode it for like a year and some change. I wanted to upgrade or change, try something else out. I got the Garmin. I had a Garmin for like two months. I'm not feeling it. Needless to say, I'm back at the Wahoo. I'm not getting paid for this. I bought two Wahoo units out my own pocket, and I bought the Garmin unit out my own pocket. This is just my own personal preference, what works, what didn't work, and um, I'm just sharing my stuff with you. Um, the Garmin does have something that the Wahoo doesn't have. It has this climbing pro function. So basically, if you're out on a climb, it's going to be another screen that can pop up, and it's supposed to give you all this data about the climb. I really don't know what that looks like. I haven't experienced with it because I'm not a climber. I don't care about climbing. I'm not interested in climbing. But if you are a person that like climbing, it has that climbing pro feature. And that may be something that sways you to get the Garmin over the Wahoo because the Wahoo doesn't have that. Another thing, when it comes to like power, power meters and things like that, if you have the Garmin Vector pedals, and you have a the dual sided power meter pedals. Garmin has this thing that's called PCO data. If you don't know what it is, look it up. And it just gives you like different types of ways to read that data as far as like balance, pressure, all that stuff. You can only get that data from the Garmin. You cannot get that from the Wahoo. So even if you have like the Garmin vector pedals and they're dual sided power meter pedals, you will not get that PCO data from the Wahoo. They only have that on Garmin. So if that's something that interests you, then that may be something um, that sways you to get the Garmin over the Wahoo. Uh, another thing, I'm going to show y'all real quick. So like I was talking about the, the startup and shutdown, like as far as the time. So I shut them both off, right? The Garmin is off. It's done. And the Wahoo is still like, all right, let me uh, let me get this. All right, let me make sure I logged out. And, and now it's finally off. That's crazy fast how much faster the Garmin is over the Wahoo. And then kind of like startup, I'll show you this. See, they're both starting up. And it's going to take a minute. But another thing also is, like I said, the Garmin has the different profiles that you can use and the Wahoo doesn't. Um, I really do like that about the Garmin, but the way I kind of get around it is that, see, the Garmin is it's already ready to go. Wahoo still started up. One of the ways I get around that is that I just have different profiles set up on different pages of the Wahoo. And then, like I said, both my bikes have DI2, and I have one of my buttons assigned to change the page. So let's say I'm riding, and I want to go to a different profile. 
I could just hit my DI2 button and it's going to switch it. And then kind of like how I was talking about how Wahoo has this feature where you can kind of take the data away. Same thing with the with the Garmin. When I'm in whatever profile and I'm riding, let's say there's another page that doesn't have as many fields and I want to see it when I'm riding, I just use my DI2 to switch to that page. So not having the profiles, I can kind of get around that with my DI2 button and not being able to add and minus the fields, I kind of get around that with my DI2 button. So, I mean, you can make either work for whatever your preference is. So that's basically all I got for y'all. I hope y'all liked the video. I'm just putting some insight on there from my own user perspective. Maybe you have some of the same things. Maybe you don't. Hopefully it works out for you. Hey, drop it in the comment. What do you prefer? Do you prefer the Garmin or do you prefer the Wahoo? Let me know. Also, if you want to check me out on Strava, Rob Armstrong, check me out. If you want to check me out on Instagram, it's underscore Rob Armstrong, all one word. As always, I'll catch y'all next time. That's all I got for y'all, man. I'm out. You know what to do. Subscribe. Rob Armstrong.